What's up guys? We are back again to win with the worst card in Clash Royale. If we go to Rail API and we scroll all the way to the bottom, we see that Rail Hogs have a 1% usage rate in the top thousand. That's pretty ridiculous, but it makes sense because everyone has Dark Prince, Bomber, or Valkyrie to counter the number one most played card, the Goblin Drill. This Rail Hogs deck has always had a special place in my heart, so we're gonna make it work today. We're gonna remove all the Bombers with arrows, we're gonna just destroy the Valkyries by bouncing them back with a Fireball, and we're gonna use the Sneaky Flying Machine to find victory. As soon as Goblin Drill eventually gets a nerf and Rail Hogs are allowed back into the meta, this deck is gonna be really strong, hopefully in the next balance changes. So let's go jump straight some games and assert dominance with the Worst card in Clash Royale. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And a huge thank you to everyone that's using code SIRTAG. All the money goes directly back into the channel, making the videos the best they can be. So jumping into this game, we're gonna see what's up. What do you have, my dude? If we go for rail recruits in the back and we slow roll a big, massive push, that could always be good. But if your opponent's got Dark Prince and Mother Witch, you're gonna lose the game if you do that. So you gotta wait and hold your ground until you figure out what they're gonna do. Looks like he's not going to have both of them unless he's got P.E.K.K.A. Which I don't want to play against right now. Please do not have Mother Witch. You're going to poison. This is really good. No Fireball, Dark Prince, Mother Witch deck. This is what we wanted, Chief. As long as we don't play against Fireball, I think that we are in a good position. Also, if you guys haven't done this placement of the Goblin Cage, you're able to shut down the Ram Rider without any damage on your tower if you got Zappies. So this is really good. The little zappy tickler in the left hand lion. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And then we've got Goblin Cage in the right, which isn't gonna force out any elixir at all, but you know, I'd like to think that our opponent would be intimidated by that Gary the Goblin coming at him full force. If you look at Shrek, you see Shrek running at you, you'd probably run the other way, right? So I would like to fireball if you're gonna go in for another witch, but <laughs> I can already tell it's gonna be a hard battle, man. This is gonna be a tough day. I don't know why I subjected myself to this, but this man's got Rail Ghost and he's gonna have Mega Knight. This is gonna be a miserable time. How are we supposed to win this one? At least the Bomber is gonna be able to clutch up. So maybe even though Bomber is one of those cards that's overpowered and destroys us, it also can help us out at the same time if we use it. If you can't beat him, gotta join him. Obviously, I can't join the power of running Mega Knight with Bomber, but. I gotta be putting myself in a little bit of a pigeonhole running the Royal Hogs. We could Fireball on this. We're just gonna immediately kill the Electro Wizard if we get one little tickle. Let's go. And then we go in for the Goblin Cage in this placement. As I said before, you just drop it here and you vibe. Wait, the poison. The poison maybe lets him get a hit. I'm a little bit scared right now. But if you drop the Goblin Cage away and then the Ram Rider locks the Goblin Cage Brawler in place, you are not able to touch the Ram Rider for the rest of the time. For the benefit of those who may have missed that, we will show it again through the magic of the instant replay. So that is one thing that I realized. You need to drop the Goblin Cage right in the middle. As you guys are seeing, that's the play all day, every day. Also splitting up Zappies, when he overcommits with the Mega Knight, we defend and then we counter push with the Rail Hogs. One other thing that I've done when I played this deck like thousands of games, you do not want to go for Rail Hogs that aggressively. As I said, they're a really bad win condition right now. But even when they were good, you want to focus more so on counter push with this deck. And when your opponent overcommits, that's when you punish them. So he's going to be able to get some damage here for sure. But I believe with Zappy's counter pushing, with all this value in the left hand lane, he has to go in for a Mega Knight here. And if he doesn't, we were able to Rail Hogs full real estate in the right hand side and win the game. So he's going to Mega Knight in the left? No, he's not. What is, what is he doing? What, what, is he, what is he doing? Is he just like losing games? I do. I'm about it. Never doubt it. I, mean, I told you what to do. You didn't listen to me. And look what happened. Hey, that's a pretty good start with this deck. Let's keep it up. Let's keep cruising through and gaining those trophies. Only 27, but you know, we'll get more than that in the next ones. So jumping into this one, we will see if we can win with the infamous Rail Hogs. People are not going to even know that this win condition exists because it's got literally 1% usage rate. So what are you going to do, man? Are you ready to rumble? So he's like Bomber and Cage. This is probably going to be Electro Giant, right? So that's what I would expect. So I think he's going to assume similar things. He's actually going to Ram Rider in the back. No way. This is amazing because we go for Zappies and he's not going to have an answer. There's no way. He's going to expect me to like have lightning. So he's just like, wait, Zappies are illegal. You're not supposed to have that card in your deck, Jake. But we 
tread and strive to be differently. So I'm going to go in for all this fireball bait together because I think he's got lightning with this deck. And I believe that we're going to... Can we just talk about the fact that the man had fireball and he waited that long? Holy crap, he didn't fireball the zappies. I can't believe the level of patience that took. He's got Bomber, he's got Fireball, and he's got Dark Prince. I thought he was gonna have like the Lightning Pekka deck that I'm so used to seeing, and I got bamboozled on so many levels. That really hurt my feelings. At least the Fireball is able to come through and give us extra value. I still think that this game is winnable despite the matchup and despite the start, but holy crap, dude. I can't believe that he held onto the Fireball for so long. I was like, okay, if you had Fireball, you would have dropped it on the Zappies. But this man, 2000 IQ, making it even worse for me. Also, it also speaks, speaks to the relative strength of the deck too, right? If I'm able to, you know, get out of that tragic of a situation and not lose my tower after, you know, giving him 25 elixir with a fireball value, it seems like it's a pretty solid deck. Yeah, he's got fireball with Pekka. This is usually gonna be, you know, not fireball, it'll typically be lightning. The fireball on that, that means that we have free real estate with all of our other fireball bait on defense. And I think the bomber is also gonna clap that tower silly. Let's go, look at that damage guys, let's go. So I need to go for recruits here most likely. And then I can save enough elixir for the goblin cage if he decides to spam into me. So if I had dropped the fly machine, I wouldn't have had elixir for the goblin cage. And I think I would have just lost the game straight up. We're gonna be able to fireball on this and make sure that he doesn't get too many piggies. The goblin cage placement probably should be directly in front of the tower, but it is what it is. We don't always play perfectly. We can maybe go and get a fly machine here and then go in for our Royal Hogs afterward. He's going to go Dark Prince, but the Dark Prince is going to go on the wrong side. Or maybe he fireballs and then the fly machine is still left over. Let's go. This is really good. This is amazing. The fly machine will also be able to kill the Dark Prince pretty much. And he's going to spam more crap into us. We go for recruits. This is actually good real estate for us. If we were able to get Zappies on the board and then fireball immediately on top of whatever he defends the piggies with. Come on. No. No, 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 no. Please don't just Electro Wizard drop a Pekka or something. We need you to spend more Elixir than that, man. At least the Zappies are tickling the tower. There's something here. There's a saving grace in this game. Maybe we'll find a way. Okay. We can do this. The Goblin Cage should be able to shut that down. He's gonna Fireball. That means that we're able to kill everything. The Zappies are able to permanently reset the Dark Prince. Okay. I like how this looks if I can get recruits on the board. Why is that dashing from literally so close to the tower? Holy crap, that was unlucky. Oh no, he's gonna try to fireball me right now. I think we go all in in the left hand side and then fireball on the mother witch. He should try to defend the other tower. What is he doing? This guy is literally just playing like a madman. If we can get an arrows down and then bomber here, maybe we can get one more hit, one more tap. No, we aren't gonna be able to get it down in time unless the zappies are able to save my booty. Zappies just save my booty. Anything here. We can go for Goblin Cage, stop the charge, fireball in time, maybe? There's a slight chance that this fireball is able to do him dirty. It's so close. This is my fireball, yes! He laughed at me and he lost! No way! Hardest counter possible. He literally has Mother Witch Electro Wizard and he thought he won. Oh, with Dark Prince too. That was the most satisfying win of my life, guys. If you BM me with a hard counter worm, we're running the worst card in the game. Holy crap, he literally was spamming laughing emojis thinking he won. Oh. <laughs> that was beautiful. That was absolutely beautiful. I do not think I've been any happier than that in my entire life playing this game. That is ridiculous. I don't know why a game can make me this happy, but this is the magic of Clash Royale. Hello? I love you. Let's get it. So this guy seems like the type of player to run Golem Clone, just with a really aggressive clan name and a really aggressive all caps name. He's definitely destined to run something stupid. I know he's gonna spam something at the river. I feel it coming in the air tonight. If you're not gonna, I'm just gonna go for arrows on your tower. Let's see what else you're gonna do, man. What's up? You're just gonna eat that straight to the face. Look, he rages his tower. That's when you know he's running like Sparky or Elixir Golem or maybe go and clone with rage. I just don't want to play against this. I'm a bit scared. Mom, pick me up. We can go for a fly machine in the back. This is a little bit risky, but I don't want to get the double elixir and find out that he's just running the elixir golem with 10 different answers to me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cycle my fly machine, see if we can get any value from that at all. I'm also gonna cycle all my zappies in one lane because he also seems like the type of person 
spam everything in one side. Okay, recruits might be able to save my booty right now. Oh, this could be extremely promising. I'm gonna hogs here. We're able to kill the Mother Witch. And the Zappies are definitely dead. There's no way to save that. There's no way to sugarcoat it either. <laughs> Zappies, it was nice knowing you. Okay, so he's probably gonna drop a Goblin Giant in front of the Mini Packa. That's at least what I would do. And go for Recruits here, and then follow up with a Cage there. So the Cage might be able to stop the Mini Packa, but I'm a little bit scared because it looks like the Goblin Cage is putting in mad work against me. Or not the Goblin Cage. The big, hefty Goblin Giant, the big Shrek boy. I'm sorry if I insulted you. I know you cost more elixir than the Goblin Cage. At least we are still alive in this game. You know what? It's always a good strategy to make your opponent just get completely bamboozled at the start. Like, I'm pretty sure he's like, I don't have to worry about this deck. I am gonna see this for another couple metas, not until Valkyrie and Dark Prince uh, get out of every, everyone's deck. So it's good for us to be able to, you know, get a decent defense. It's not a clean de defense by any stretch of the imagination, but it is something. And then we can go in for a fly machine here. And we'll be able to shut everything else down. Fireball, maybe? Yeah, I think we fireball a bit earlier. And then we go for recruits. We probably lose the tower here. But as long as we kill the Sparky and take the up. See what we can do. We're going to go and go all in in the left hand line. I'm so lucky. I decided not to go in there, guys. Because I could have catapulted like a bomber on the right hand side, but now the bomber is giving us chip damage on the left hand side. We can fireball up in here to finish off the mini Pekka. Make sure that the Mother Witch now gets targeted. Yo, the double ceiling fans! No way! This is actually ridiculous that this is doing so well. Ceiling fans still alive. We're able to go in for a bomber, reset everything so the flying machine doesn't die. Oh, the flying machine did die. <laughs> I stand corrected. But with Railhogs in that placement, one tile away from the river, you get all of them to go towards the tower. So you don't have to drop them directly on top of the river. That placement is imperative if you are in a 1-1 situation. If you do that, you will secure way more games than you've ever dreamed of. And 34 trophies, that's a lot, baby. Let's go. We are climbing up the ranks. To jump in into this game, we got to figure out what our opponents got. If only I had Zappies. Come on, man. We don't have Zappies and we don't have Royal Recruits and he drops a Prince in the back. This is the worst possible cycle we could ever have. I might straight up lose the game. If he goes Golem right now, this is the only chance that I... Yeah, okay. Thank goodness he didn't Golem. So if he Golem in the back, I would have automatically lost. And sometimes when you're playing a card game, you're going to get screwed by card cycle and you can't do anything about it. But this is looking semi-promising. Assume that the Dark Prince doesn't kill all the Zappies. And then we go in for Recruits here. Also, how did that just not hit anything? <laughs> I really thought it was going to go towards the Zappies in the middle, but the Dark Prince had a mind of its own, and it manifested an amazing offensive play right into my tower. Not the way we wanted to start this game, but I am a believer, I'm a memer, and I'm a dreamer. If we take a tower, we can always secure the bag and bounce back. He's also running Tesla with Pekka, so fortunately, we are not running in a deck that gets automatically obliterated by that. Usually, if you've got a Hog Rider, it's not going to break through a Tesla and a Pekka and a Prince. Too many cards on the ground. What are we going to do, man? We could maybe go for Royal Hogs here. I, I don't like this card cycle. There's something about just cycling a Goblin Cage into a... didn't even let me finish my sentence. I don't think I'm going to win this game, guys. So yeah, to be real with you guys, unfortunately, this is impossible to win. He went in for a Prince, we didn't have our Zappies, and we also didn't have our Rare Recruits. So what am I supposed to do to defend? Absolutely nothing. So sometimes you're going to lose because of card order, and this is with a prime example of it. But you know what? You can't win them all, so we'll bounce on to the next game, and we'll definitely assert dominance there. Jumping into this one, we have to bounce back. When we lost with this deck, you know, our blood is in the water and Clash Royale just knows. Yep, that's, that's pretty scary. I don't like that. I really don't like that. <laughs> oh no. Wait, if I go for arrows, this might be worth it because we're going to force out extra elixir. Unless he doesn't try to defend that. Okay, he's going to drop a fly machine. This is fine. So if I fly machine in a little nook and cranny here, maybe force out a fireball. And then I can go for zappies here. Afterward to finish that off, depending on what happens. 
I just don't want to give him too much value. So I'm waiting. I'm like, okay, are you going to arrow me? Because that could be really problematic if that happens. We kill your Lava Hound. We get a juicy positive Elixir trade because we have all this crap coming at you. And your Lava Hound did nothing. It didn't even tank for a balloon or anything. Oh, yo. I need to split more rare recruits on the right. That was a huge misplay. I should have cycled four of them there. But if we get a lot of crap coming at him, this could work out well. As you guys can see, Lava Hound is one of those matchups that's not that bad. It is bad when they've got Tombstone and Valkyrie, though. And maybe a Bomber. But he's got a lot of splash damage, so this is going to be a bit more spicy. Usually, you know, in the meta where everyone was running, like, Royal Hogs and meta decks that didn't have Goblin Drill in it, people were running Barbarians. But this guy is not running Barbarians. He's running the, uh, the variation that I don't like playing against. I'm still going to arrow so I don't have to respond to the Fly Machine. I think it's worth it. Kind of just ignore, unless this guy gets any bold ideas of dropping something crazy. Bruh. Yep, he's dropping something crazy. So we'll do this. We'll Goblin Cage. Make sure that it locks onto that. We'll go in for a Bomber counter. I hope that it doesn't lock onto my tower. Yeah. If the Goblin Cage is too close, it locks onto the tower instead of the uh, Goblin Cage Brawler itself. So that's one thing to be concerned about. If it does happen, if you don't know, now you know. Also, remember, he's got Valkyrie, so... I think we go and split most of the recruits on the right again. We'll see if we can get that to work out. We've got two Zappies here. This seems pretty lucrative. I'm gonna go for Fly Machine to isolate that Valkyrie and finish it off. And I could Fireball on this as quickly as I can because if we're able to keep the Zappy on the tower, I think we've got a lot of value up in here. All I need to do is kite the Inferno Dragon to the other side, which isn't that difficult. You guys probably haven't seen this that often, but Bomber, it's an anti-air card sometimes. Look at that, it's thriving out here. Heck yeah, man. Let's go. Also, we beat out another Valkyrie. Plus the Skeleton Dragons, this is free real estate right now. All I need to do is go in for recruits. I think that they'll soak it up. There's so many of them, there's so many of them. They gotta just clog up the flying machine. Yes, it happened. That's amazing. Now we go for another flying machine. We drop all of our rail hogs in the right hand side. The flying machine will take it out in the left hand side if he's not ready. He doesn't have it. The man doesn't have the juice. He doesn't have the sauce. All we need is a little bit of extra value with the Rail Hogs to not die to the Valkyrie. We're fireballing and we're securing the bag. So if you guys are seeing all of the great matchups that we're getting whenever we don't play against, you know, Valkyrie plus Fireball and Dark Prince, or that, you know, extremely weird P.E.K.K.A. deck that we played that we lost because of card order, if I just get these and I don't get Skill Drill, I'll win every time. So in the new meta, when Dark Prince and Valkyrie and Fireball are not in every single deck, this Rare Recruits Rare Hogs deck is definitely going to be a top tier deck in the new meta. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and enjoy the rest of your day.